This story happened a few weeks ago when my girlfriend and I wanted to celebrate our two year anniversary together. So, there was no better way to do it than to go on a short getaway, far from the busy city life we were used to. I searched for a few houses on Airbnb and settled on a big three story home on the outskirts of town resembling a cottage. It was the perfect place. And so, I showed the photos to my girlfriend and she was on board with my selection. According to the app, the house was owned by an older gentleman that looked to be around his 60s. There was a brief set of rules that he put in the description stating that we could only access the bottom two floors, leaving the top floor off limits. My girlfriend and I didn't make a fuss about it as we were content with the price and what we saw in the photos. Nonetheless, we dropped by the following week. Like all the Airbnb check-ins, we took a brief tour of the house. Everything seemed as advertised in the photographs. The second floor was where we could find the bedroom and bathroom, while the bottom floor was where the kitchen, living room, and dining room was. Since there were only two of us anyway, this was worth it even though the door to the third floor was locked. After all, Having two floors to ourselves was more than enough. On the first night, we simply hung out and watched some television. I remember it being around 1 in the morning when we were just about to call it a night. But right as we were about to climb into bed, I could hear the sound of footsteps creaking somewhere beyond the living room. The sound seemed to be emanating from upstairs. I shook my head, unsure whether I was just hearing things. But when I turned to face my girlfriend, I could see that she heard it too. So, to put our minds at ease, I left my girlfriend in the living room as I headed upstairs to check where the sounds may have come from. I remembered hearing it again, but much more vivid. It seemed like the sounds were coming from the floor above me. I headed for the locked door on the third floor, taking a deep breath as I walked through the pitch darkness. When I found the knob, I wrapped my fingers around it and began yanking it frantically. But no matter what I did, it wouldn't budge. It was totally locked. What the hell are you hiding in here? I whispered to myself. Then, to my surprise, the footsteps immediately stopped. I knew I must have scared off whoever it was up there. When I went back to my girlfriend and explained the ordeal, she instantly messaged the owner, alerting him about the strange noise. About a minute later, the owner responds, insisting that this happens all the time since there were a lot of raccoons in the area. So, to avoid ruining the special occasion, we decided to take his word and enjoy the rest of the night. The following night, we watched some TV again without any interference. This time, no odd sounds were coming from the third floor. However, as we flipped through the channels, a video of an empty room with night vision was displayed on the screen. At first, I thought it was just one of those reality shows or perhaps a lame horror movie. So, we quickly changed the channel after that. Now, we were watching a house from a first person's point of view, like the camera was near the doorbell. It got us thinking about how bizarre it was for some of these channels to share similar features to the home we were in. And that's when we started putting two and two together. We flipped through the channels again and were shocked to see surveillance camera footage all over the house. But the most appalling video of them all was an aerial view of the toilet. We couldn't tell if it was the same bathroom as ours. So, I began recording with the camera on my cell phone and waited in the living room while my girlfriend headed to the washroom. As she made her way upstairs, I could literally feel my heart beating out of my chest. I didn't want to believe it, but my fear became a realization when I saw my partner on the TV as she entered the bathroom. My heart sank in utter terror. It became evident that the footage we had seen was of the house, which the Airbnb owner must have set up. All of our intimate moments were recorded, our most private thoughts and possessions exposed. So, we immediately packed up and left, hoping no one was waiting to ambush us outside the house. As we ran toward the car, we stuffed our luggage in the back seat and drove off. However, before leaving the property, I could swear seeing someone peeking from the top window behind the curtain. That's when I suddenly remembered the creaking noise from the previous night. All this time, I couldn't help but realize that the Airbnb owner must have been living on the floor above us, surveying and recording our every move. What turned out to be a seemingly innocent getaway turned into a horrific nightmare. I felt violated, 
abused, taken advantage of, reluctant to escalate the matter. My girlfriend asked me to complain to Airbnb instead of the police. When I asked her why, she said she didn't want random men from the station or investigation team to see all the private stuff we had done during our stay. Hence, I granted her request and complained to Airbnb. However, after spending hours explaining to them, it didn't seem like we were getting anywhere. So, we went around in circles only to receive a full refund and an update telling us that they had banned the owner from using the Airbnb service. Meanwhile, he wasn't incarcerated because he and his lawyers claimed it was only meant to be a prank and that my girlfriend and I had no physical injuries. My girlfriend was satisfied with the outcome, but for me, I wanted to see him behind bars. Since then, I'd sweat and tremble whenever I saw a camera, forever traumatized by the experience. There are dozens of cases on the internet where creepy peeping toms were caught hiding hidden cameras inside their Airbnb residences. But this story in particular was inspired by two disturbing Airbnb cases that are just downright terrifying. The first case was a video of a couple shocked to find that one of their TV channels was showing an aerial view of a toilet. Happened to be the same one in their Airbnb home. Whether the video is legit or not, the thought is horrific. However, the second case is what really takes the cake. A man hears noises at night in his Airbnb stay. When he checks the air vent to find out where the sounds were coming from, he sees a secret room hidden inside there. Airbnb has since been contacted for comment. This happened several years ago around the holidays, which was also my girlfriend's birthday at the time. I wanted to do something romantic for her and get us a nice place to stay at for a few days as a present. It was a good idea in theory. Having a relaxing getaway with just the two of us in the middle of all the holiday traveling and family visiting. Unfortunately, it didn't go as planned. My first mistake was not booking far enough in advance. By the time the idea came to mind, it was already December and everything was sold out. When I didn't have any luck with traditional hotels, I resorted to checking Airbnb. There weren't many Airbnbs available either, but I eventually came across one that was a cottage type, kind of out in the woods. It didn't have a good rating, and the host was this mid-40s decrepit looking male, but overall he seemed harmless, and it was the only option I had. So out of desperation, I booked it. Fast forward a couple weeks later, and it was my girlfriend's birthday weekend. When we finally checked in the Airbnb retreat, the first thing we noticed was just how big it was. Aside from that, I thought it wasn't in the greatest shape, but my girlfriend was enamored with the cottage aesthetic, so I was glad she was enjoying her present. We met the host briefly at the front door, then he showed us to our room and basically left us to our own devices. Although, as he was leaving, he mentioned something I didn't quite register in the moment, not until after everything else went down. I'll leave you to be now. You won't even know I'm here. I'm pretty good at going unnoticed. Uh, thank you. Hmm, that was weird, right? Meh, at least we have the whole place to ourselves. Yeah, you're right. Come on, let's check out the house. We spent the next few minutes touring the entire house, which took us a while as it was a fairly big property. Everything was decent enough to my standards, and it seemed like my girlfriend was content with the Airbnb. However, there was one problem that was very unsettling once we noticed it. On all the windows in the house, there were no blinds or curtains of any kind. There were rods above the windows which made it obvious that there had been blinds there but they had all been taken down. There wasn't even a curtain on the window in the bathroom. Obviously at that point we were a little freaked out and concerned for our privacy. I texted the host and told him this was a serious problem. A few seconds later the host responds back, more or less shrugging it off. He said that we were so far out in the woods that there shouldn't be any chance of a person coming by and trying to look through the windows. And also that with all the tree coverage none of the windows got very much light anyway. Obviously, that wasn't a satisfying response for me or my girlfriend, but we tried our best not to be worried about it so we could be focused on having a good time. We turned in pretty early that night, as we'd had a very long day. Of course, the window in our room didn't have any curtains or blinds either. I remember falling asleep with my eyes half open and looking at the snow coming down outside. For some reason, it was like I was hypnotized by the lack of curtains, and that's when I passed out. Hours later, around 4 in the morning, I woke to the sound of several notifications coming through my phone. I was very groggy and delirious, but I figured it might be important, so I forced myself to roll over and check it. It was Airbnb messaging me, and when I saw what my phone read, I couldn't believe it. 
Airbnb was telling me to pack all my belongings and leave the property immediately. It felt like my entire world was crashing down before me. It almost seemed like I was dreaming. But what made the situation all the more disturbing was when the Airbnb advised me not to notify the host until we were gone. That's when my heart sank to my stomach. Maybe it was something that Airbnb knew about the host that we didn't. A million thoughts raced across my mind. I assumed the man had to be a serial killer or something. I turned over to my girlfriend and began to wake her up, shrugging at her until she was finally awake. I tried desperately to explain what was going on, but that's when I saw her eyes get super wide. And then, she gave the most horrific, blood-curdling shriek I ever heard. There's someone in the window! I turned around in horror, and that's when I saw him. It was the host, peering inside our room with his hands cupped around his face. I screamed and jumped back. That sicko didn't budge. He just stood there watching us while pressed up against the glass. Enraged, I charged at the window and banged my fist against it, nearly shattering it, saying, Leave us alone or go, you cops! My girlfriend pulled me away from the confrontation, and we frantically began packing up all our things and got dressed. All the while, this creepy old man watched us through the window the entire time. Within a couple of minutes, we left the room in a rush. I led my girlfriend through the house, running by the kitchen to grab a blade from the nightstand. As we cautiously made our way outside, I could feel the tension in the air. I didn't know if the creep would pop out of nowhere. Thankfully, we didn't see any sign of him as we headed to the car. Me and my girlfriend quickly threw all our stuff in the back seat, and we got inside and locked the doors. But just as we were about to leave, the man slammed his hand on the side of my window. I frantically drove off and never looked back. On the way home, my girlfriend was already drafting a serious complaint to Airbnb, asking why this guy was allowed to host people in his house in the first place. The only response we got back was that they had received numerous complaints from other guests about how he broke Airbnb rules and regulations on multiple occasions. It just so happened that they revoked his status as a host while we were there. Either way, it's no mystery to me why that place had such bad ratings with that guy around. He strikes me as the kind of guy that probably has his dead wife stashed somewhere in his house. The story was inspired by an incident that happened to a couple sometime last year. The couple claims that Airbnb instructed them to check out immediately and to not alert the host. In one of the messages, Airbnb stated that the host wasn't aware of the situation, making it all the more alarming. The couple then departed the house and that's when the host reached out to them, asking them to ignore any quote-unquote dangerous allegations that Airbnb might have disclosed about him. This happened back in 2015 when I used to live in a two-bedroom apartment. My roommate had recently moved out, so I was suddenly struggling to pay rent on my own. That's when I was swayed by the thought of renting out my spare room as an Airbnb on the weekends. My parents helped me furnish the guest room, and when I had guests over on the weekends, I would go over to their place and stay with them. Things were fine for a while, until the first time I rented out the room to some guy named Kenny. He was a few years younger than me and looked like an edgy incel with a wannabe rock star haircut. It was clear that he was at least a bit of a creep from the beginning, but at the time I wasn't concerned enough about who I let stay in my home. I knew my profile picture would probably attract a lot of men to the listing, but I didn't really care. I was gone while the guests were there, so nobody could ever create a problem. But Kenny found a way. He would constantly text me strange things like, What kind of soap do you use in the shower? Or, Which bed do you sleep on? It was annoying, but I knew he would be gone in a couple of days or so. But, just when I thought I'd seen the last of him, he booked the next weekend immediately. I rolled my eyes about it, not expecting this to become a routine thing. But this was only the beginning of Kenny being a regular guest. In fact, once he showed up, he was basically the only guest. This meant I didn't have to worry about not getting the rental income, but it came at the cost of having to deal with every unbearable interaction with them at check-in. He got in the habit of showing up two hours early, while I was still preparing the room for him, and he would just sit outside my front door, waiting for me to come out. At 3 p.m. sharp, the actual check-in time, I would squirm out of the door awkwardly and give him the keys, then rush out of there like I had somewhere really important to be. Hey, where are you going? 
You can talk to me. I'm a nice guy. I didn't look back. I got out of the building as quickly as possible. I didn't know if the guy was mentally ill or not, but I wasn't trying to stick around to find out. But unfortunately, things got more disturbing from that point on. One night, I started hearing things while falling asleep. There would be a noise somewhere in my apartment, making me feel like I wasn't alone. I remember getting up and shuffling through the dark to check my front door. A huge weight came off my shoulders seeing that the door was still locked. I would then go back to bed assuming the noises were coming from the hallway and that I was just getting paranoid because I let strangers stay in my home. After this repeated itself a few times one week, I decided I needed to take a break from the whole Airbnb thing, so I made the room unavailable for a weekend. I still went and stayed over by my parents' place, just to make sure to completely avoid Kenny. I honestly remember feeling refreshed after not dealing with him for a weekend. At around 9pm that Sunday, I made my way home and was excited to have the evening to myself. I locked the door behind me and set my things down. Then I went to the bathroom to get ready for bed. And when I flicked the switch to turn the lights on, I could see Kenny standing there, holding one of the kitchen knives. The blood drained from my face as he held it against my throat. You're all mine now. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. <laughs> Please don't do this, Kenny. You can stay here as long as you like. Don't bargain with me. I'm going to get exactly what I want. I tried to back away, but he closed the distance between us and started to force me backwards, cornering me into my bedroom. There, I tried to scream for help, but it was already far too late. Kenny shoved me onto the bed and forced me down, holding me with one hand and keeping the knife at my throat with the other. All I could do was plead for my life, hoping he would let me go, but he didn't. I was trapped and held captive in my own apartment with a monster. I continued trying to get away, but Kenny wasn't budging, holding me against my will. After several horrendous excruciating minutes, Kenny was done. He got up and began to rob me of my phone and other valuables, just for good measure as he bolted out of the front door. When I was able to collect myself enough to get help, I had to get out an old iPad and use it to contact my parents so they could call the police for me. I sat in the corner of my bedroom armed with a knife as I waited for my parents and law enforcement to arrive. 15 minutes felt like 15 hours as I waited in constant fear, not knowing if the police would show up in time or if Kenny was going to break into my house again. When they finally arrived, the cops searched the area and were unable to find Kenny. However, it wasn't hard for them to find him. They arrested him at his apartment the very next day. They knew who he was from his Airbnb profile which had all of his information. Over the course of the investigation that followed, it was discovered that Kenny's obsession with me ran deeper and went on for much longer than I had ever thought. He made a copy of my key early on and was using it to sneak into my apartment. He had been watching me sleeping and changing and other sick perverted things like that for weeks. All this time, knowing that Kenny was making all those sounds at night just sickens me to my core. I can only help to think that when I made the room unavailable on Airbnb for the weekend, it caused him to have a psychotic meltdown and do what he did. I wasn't okay for a long time after that. I could barely even speak for days. And it's taken me this long to discuss it publicly. I broke my lease on that apartment and moved back in with my parents, and I've been living with them ever since. This story was inspired by a case that happened to a 29-year-old woman returning to her Airbnb from a New Year's Eve night out in New York. The suspect hid in her bathroom and then held her at knife point upon her arrival. It was alleged that he had copied her keys to the Airbnb prior to the whole ordeal. Just goes to show how a harmless outing can turn dangerous real quick. <laughs>